I'm in a beetle with a difference today. It's electric. I'm going to select the further regen mood as we head back downhill. So this is a Beetle converted by electric classic cars and uh, it's really rather good. It still has the conventional Beetle gearbox so in some ways it's just like driving a normal Beetle only you don't need most of the gears and you don't have to use the clutch anywhere near as much. It has an electric motor where you'd normally find the flat four engine, uh, which develops about 75 brake horsepower and uh, over 100 pound foot of torque as well, which is from rest of course. It's not like the standard engine where you've got to get it to the peak of that power. So I'm take it out of eco mode so I get a bit more grunt on this hill. And this is now accelerating up a hill in a way a 1200cc Beetle would not. This one has a battery pack under the bonnet where you'd normally find the fuel tank on a Beetle and also another stack behind the rear seat. Gives it a range of about 100 miles and the overall weight penalty compared to how it was is only about 60 kilograms, so only about a person's weight. It's a credit to the builder in this car, but it's a lovely car to drive all around. It's got um, front disc brakes, which are a, an upgrade over standard, and slightly beefier anti-roll bars, but it's otherwise largely stock. So like most modern electric cars, if I ease off the pedal, as now, we get regen. I've just clicked it back into eco mode for extra regen. Whereas the car in front of me was having to brake all the way down that hill, I only had to brake right at the end of it. But this really is the combination of my loves. This is a classic car with electric power and it works supremely well. So pretty much the only mechanical noise you can hear is the old traditional gearbox. Which is the standard item complete with no synchro mesh on first gear. That's okay because you don't need first gear. And we've covered a lot of miles in this car today and we've still got 18.5% of battery left. We've driven all the way from Llandinum in Powys over to Llandinum over the mountain road, uh, which it certainly has a lot of hills going on. And we've had a fair headwind on the way back as well. This feels like a thoroughly practical electric car. Go for an overtake, that's not a bad idea. It's got grunt when you want it. Now we try and get back some energy going downhill. So when I initially apply the brake pedal, that boosts the regenerative effect. when I push the pedal harder I right? get more of an actual braking effect from the brakes. So we're currently doing 60 miles an hour. I'm still in third gear but I could change to fourth. Makes it a little quieter. We're going back into a 30 limit so I'm going to put it back into eco mode. And it's that torque that totally transforms this experience. You're not having to fight to keep an engine in its power band. You can just put your foot down at any speed and it will accelerate. We'll come to a stop and it all goes very quiet. Put it back into third gear to pull away, take it out of eco mode so it'll accelerate. All you can hear is everyone else's engines. So there you go, that's 
that's the electric beat. I didn't get very long to talk about the uh, electric beetle while I was driving it so I'm going to go in a bit more into the detail I mean when you saw me pulling away in the car you will have seen me changing gear and you might be thinking well electric cars don't usually do that but um, let's use my 2CV as an example here effectively the electric motor replaces the engine so the Beetle still has its conventional gearbox and most electric cars have a gearbox, but it's usually one gear. But the beauty of a conversion is you, you can just bolt it up to the original gearbox. So you've still got the option of using all of the gears. But with the torque an electric motor generates, you don't have to bother with most of the gears. So when I was driving the Beetle, I'd use second to pull away if I wanted to make a quick getaway or if I was starting on a hill. But it would quite happily pull away in third gear. And... I'd used fourth mostly to keep the transmission noise down because it's really noisy in third gear. Um, it was a lot quieter in fourth. It feels more relaxing. But then I found on steep hills um, the motor generated enough torque to keep pace but you could actually accelerate up the hill in third gear. So overall third gear is probably the best one to use and a lot of people who convert conventional cars to electric recommend third gear. First gear you definitely don't need. And this is all because an electric motor works very differently to a combustion engine. A combustion engine tends to have a sweet spot where the power and torque are at maximum. There's usually different peaks, torque generated a bit lower down. Whereas an electric motor generates all its torque instantly. So you're not having to keep it in that sweet spot. And it will pull from zero revs. So you come to a stop in a car converted and you don't have to dip the clutch, which takes some getting used to. It's a bit of an unusual experience having all the pedals there and only braking. Um, but you quickly get used to it. it it's not too bad. I, I found it was a bit weird when reversing because I was still trying to slip the clutch. But you don't slip the clutch with an electric motor. There's so much torque. You, if you keep doing that too much, you'll end up frying the clutch probably. So it's just a case of adjusting the mindset. Uh, the tested Beetle did not have a heater fitted at all. So for all your practicality, that's not brilliant. But electric classic cars could fit one if you so wished. Obviously, that's going to impact your range slightly. And just to come up with the final figures of the day, we drove about 80 miles and I drove as I normally would in a car. So I was doing 60 as often as I could. And we were up and down lots of hills. And we got back and we probably still had 16 or 17 percent of battery left so a genuine 100 mile range even in normal everyday conditions in difficult terrain that's quite impressive the downside you're probably talking about 25 grand to build a beetle to that specification um, but it was very well engineered and 25 grand also gets you a nissan leaf hmm decisions decisions Thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.